We're now joined by the number eight seed, the Canisius College Golden Griffins. They fall 68 to 56 in the first round today to the number nine seed, Mammoth Hawks. We're joined by head coach Terry Zay, along with student athletes Kayla Ho'ohuli and Crystal Porter. And coach, if you could just begin with an opening statement, please. Yeah, I, I thought um, in the first two games we handled their pressure pretty well. This game, um, maybe not quite as good. I thought the difference was in the first two games we attacked the pressure for baskets, and today we didn't. Uh, we couldn't attack for baskets as quickly, and then we bogged down in the half court a little bit. You know, we got some shots that normally go down for us, and obviously it's tough if they don't go down. Yeah, I thought that Mammoth did a really nice job. They were you know, prepared and ready to go. We battled hard. These two competed really, really hard down the stretch, just couldn't get it to get over that hump. Take questions from me. We ask that you please raise your hand and use the microphone. Okay, uh, Coach, uh, you know, just uh, could you comment on Kayla's, uh, you know, play today? You know, it seemed like she was trying to will you over the hump there in the second half. Yeah, that's, that's a microcosm of Kayla's career for us. Like, that's the kind of player she's been. I mean, I said in the locker room, we don't, we, after the game, we don't even talk about the game in the locker room because the game is small compared to somebody's career coming, you know, to a close. And somebody's career who was just an unbelievable warrior for us. So what you watched out there, I watched for four years in practice and in games where she just has that iron will and a desire to be successful. And, and she got better every year of her career. She got better as a player individually. And I think that's a, a great testament to her work ethic. She's the best two-way player I've ever coached, meaning she defends at a very, very high level, and she plays offense at a very, very high level. In my 11 years, and in my 25 years, I can't remember anyone on the men's side or women's side that could do that. Sometimes you got people that will really guard, and sometimes you have people that can really score, but you rarely have people that could do both, and she, she's done both for her career. So, yeah, she was try, trying hard, like she always does, and uh, it's tough to see it, you know, tough to see it end. No matter when it ends, it's very difficult. And just, Kayla, what are your, you know, just your reaction to uh, this game? Um, well, it's very upsetting that we had to end it that way, but I kind of asked for a better career these four, these past four years with Coach Zay and the girls. Did you, uh, you know, uh, you you were in decent shape there at halftime, and uh, they came out and hit four of their first eight threes. Sort of, uh, you know, kind of what was your perception of there, where, how it got away from you in the early in the second half? For, for me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought we didn't have great defensive intensity in that segment a little bit. And then one, one or two of them were off of, like, an offensive rebound kick out. Those are hard threes, right? Like, it gets tipped out, and, and they make it. That's a tough three. And that put us – I think that put us in a little bit of a hole where maybe we – we got urgent to try to, to get out of it, and we got a little disjointed offensively in that stretch. And then, it's, then it gets difficult. Because we felt, I think we felt pressure at that point, like, oh, hold on here. And we got a little bit disjointed offensively. And everybody wanted to do it. Like, you saw the desire of Crystal trying to, to make some plays at the basket. And, and I think that we just felt that pressure, and maybe that caused us not to be able to, to score the way we wanted to. Uh, you know, they were, their point guards were pretty good. Uh, their ability to get in, in the lane, uh, you know, can you comment on that and defending uh, number four for them? Yeah, I thought that in the first two games when we played them this season, when we beat them two times, we kept the dribble penetration to a minimum. Um, and then this game, the dribble penetration got us a little bit. And that can happen when someone makes a couple threes, right? Because now your, your gaps are bigger because you're running out to a three-point shooter, so the gaps are a little bit bigger, and, and they, they definitely hurt us with the dribble penetration. Pete? Uh, Terry, is there anything you, you see in Monmouth that could give uh, Quinnipiac uh, problems tomorrow? I'm not seeing anything in anybody that's given Quinnipiac problems this year. <laughs> like they, have you checked their scores? They win by 40. Like They just beat Monmouth at Monmouth by four, 35 or 40 points. And we played them doing an overtime game at their place. I think that's the closest game they had all year. Um, but Mon they do have the size you know, that, that can go up and down with them. And, and Monmouth doesn't mind shooting quickly, and they don't mind shooting threes. So that can be the great equalizer. If, if Monmouth stays hot like they did in the second half from three, and they can make threes and stay in it, then it's, you know, it's, it's a possibility for sure. But Quinnipiac is pretty good. 
Joined by the number eight seed Canisius College Golden Griffins, they fall in the first round to the number nine seed Mammoth Hawks, 68-56. Joined by head coach Terry Zay and student athletes Kayla Ho'ohuli and Crystal Porter. And uh, Crystal, you guys were able to sweep this team in the regular season. Uh, two very good games. Uh, obviously couldn't win today. What do you feel like the difference was the third time around? Um, I just felt like we came out with no energy in the second half. Um, defense, we were very lackadaisical. Uh, we couldn't keep the uh, guards in, in front of us, and it was, it was just all bad. And then, uh, Kayla, obviously a big part of your guys' game is hitting threes, one of the best three-point shooting teams in, in the nation. When the threes don't fall, how, how much difficult does that make everything else for you guys offensively? I think us shooting the threes is like our bread and butter, but um, the f it makes the other team like play closer to us. So me and Emily are able to go off the bounce. Even Tiana, Tiana has the skills to make her threes and then get to the bucket as well. So breaking them down on defense and then op um, finding the open players. So. Other questions? All right, thank you very much.